welcome back to RC Icons. So in today's episode, we've got some, go figure, new cars to show you. <laughs> oh, it is what it is. So I've got four cars to show you in this in this uh, video. I actually have a couple of new unbox kits. I'm going to do that in a separate video, some new semi trucks that came in. Um, but we'll save that for another video. So in this video, I, video I've got four cars to show you. Essentially, uh, one rally car, one truck, um, and two buggies. And then I've got some parts that came in with the cars, and I've got a chassis kit that, by the time you see this video, is kind of old news. But I'll show it to you anyway. Um, so, what's come in? Well, you know that I've been on kind of a Kyosho kick over the past few months in the last unboxing or maybe two unboxings ago I'm not sure now I showed you my new Ultima Pro um, you've seen my Pro XL you saw the new unbox Triumph um, blah 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 my Ultima Turbo but one of the cars that I didn't have was an Ultima 2 so I ended up landing an Ultima 2 the thing is a complete basket case it's covered in red dirt like red clay um, the tires, the front tires are correct. The rear tires are not. The rear tires look like uh, the Proline Waffles, which I actually have a brand new set of those. Um, so we'll have to see. But this this is definitely going to be a test for my ultrasonic cleaner. Um, so yeah, the car seems to be pretty original. The chassis is completely hacked. Uh, this is an absolute runner. But from the same seller on eBay, I was able to buy a brand new chassis for it too. So... That car is going to get completely ripped apart and restored. It's got a Reedy Radon, 30,000 RPM brush motor in it. So that's going to get rebuilt essentially just for the collection. Uh, we'll run it once just so that you guys can see it. But it's just kind of my ult part of my Ultima um, family cars. Now, I'm not trying to collect every Altima, although I feel like I'm pretty close to having every Altima. I've got an uh, Altima RBR that's on its way in, too, from Taiwan Kenny. Um, I was more trying to get the earlier one. So I have an original Altima. I've got an Altima Pro. Now I have the Altima 2. Uh, I've got the Turbo Altima. That, that was the second car. Um, I've got, what other Ultimas do I have? Uh, I've got the Pro XL. I've got the Pro X. Um, I've got a Pro XL new inbox kit as well. And then I've got an RB5, and now I've got an RBR as well. So we've got quite a few of the Ultima family cars. Um, one of the other cars that came in over the past couple weeks, so I had run the Dyna Blaster. You guys saw that video, and I was talking about how I wanted a runner of the Dyna Blaster. So this one came out, came from a friend in the UK. It's actually in, in awesome shape. Um, so this is my runner. It's actually got um, 3D printed uprights front and rear. So it's a little bit more robust than uh, the standard Dyna Blaster. Um, the body's a little bit rough. It's exactly what I was looking for, to be honest. So the, the chassis has a couple of scratches and I'll bring the camera over so that you can see it. Couple nicks on the, the wheels. Um, it's a perfect runner. It's got alloy oil filled shocks, aftermarket shocks on it. So uh, it's exactly what I was looking for out of a runner. That that when I took that one out for a run, I just had so much fun. But I have so much time into that body and chassis that I didn't want to destroy it. I really want that to stay on the shelf. So this one's going to be my runner. And it's funny because when I was when I was looking at stadium trucks, I was trying to decide whether I wanted another Dyna Blaster for a runner or whether I wanted to venture into something else. And I almost bought a RC-10T. And uh, I was looking at the 10T, the 10T2, the 10T3. Um, but I really liked the Dyna Storm chassis instead of going with the RC-10 aluminum chassis. So I ended up sticking with the Tamiya and, and going for the Dyna Blaster. And it was such a great price that I really couldn't complain. Um, another one that came in from Martin in Switzerland, my friend Martin, um, he's sold me a couple of TRF cars. Martin's huge into the TRF cars. Um, he's an unbelievable builder too. And, uh, he's always got chassis for sale. He likes to build the chassis up and then he sells them on and then he builds them again. I think part of the fun for Martin is to hunt, um, for parts and stuff like that. So 
I saw this one come up on Martin's uh, eBay store, TRF 211XM. So this is a runner. Uh, the chassis is pretty scraped up on the bottom. The rest of the car is absolutely perfect. Big bore shocks, um, carbon shock tower. Mid motor design with the 211 XM, and I don't have uh, the only the only two wheel drive TRF buggy I have is the 201, and I was actually pretty happy just having that one. Um, but I couldn't resist this one. I love the chrome and blue, um, the chrome and blue decals that he's got on the body. I don't know what it is about it. I just had to have it. So he cut me a great deal on that, and he actually sent me a bunch of extra wheels that he had laying around and a set of rib tires for it in case I decided to go with rib. Um, so yeah, that came from Martin and, uh, and I appreciate it. So in my unboxing videos, you've seen that I have a few, uh, Lancia Delta integrals, the Tamiya ones on the TA-01 chassis. Um, Glenn actually got one as well from the Larry Lisa Botany auction, but I've got two from Taiwan Kenny that, that are, uh, one's going to get built. One will stay new in box in my new in box collection. But you've also seen when I was talking about my scale car cars, I had sent Ari that, uh, the Ferrari Testarossa and I had replaced it with a built Testarossa. Well, this is a scale car, scale car series car that a lot of people don't know about. And I actually mentioned this in one of those videos that, they did do a Delta Integral on a Raider chassis, four-wheel drive Raider chassis, and it's obviously a rally car. Well, this was the one I was talking about in that video, and the car is assembled. The chassis is assembled. I believe it was run, but not run hard. The body was never finished. The original body is in here. Original decals are in here. Perfect candidate to finish and put along with the rest of my Scale Car Series cars. So... Yeah, it's absolutely epic. I, I've never seen another one, to be honest. Now, I've seen the Kyosho Delta Integral, but they're always nitro. I've never seen the electric version, ever. Um, so, I watched this one on eBay UK for, I don't know, four or five months. And, you know, every time, every time I would look at it, I would back away. Finally contacted the guy, asked him what he needed to have for it, and we were able to get the deal done for a, a real nice price. So, um, yeah, let me bring the camera over and we'll take a look at that. And then this is a carbon chassis kit. So if you guys watch um, Glenn on Tamiya Legends, he showed this on his, um, his first video in his, in his new hobby room. He was showing you guys a carbon chassis kit for the Thundershot family cars. Well, this came from Glenn when, when the... Uh, when the manufacturer, the guy, I, I don't even know the guy's name, he's in Australia, first approached Glenn about one of these chassis, Glenn had showed it to me, asked me if I wanted one, and I was like, yeah, dude, absolutely. Um, so Glenn actually bought this for me and sent it to me just as a thank you for, you know, um, supporting his channel and, and just because we're friends. So I'm psyched to have it. This means more to me than anything, to be honest. So I'll bring the camera over and I'll show you um, this carbon kit, but it's also been featured. Gavin showed it. He just did a uh, Thunder Dragon, I believe. He did a chassis conversion on a Thunder Dragon with this same kit. So the same manufacturer um, basically reached out to every channel <laughs> to, to get his name out there, which is fine. It just it, it ends up it ends up being you know a situation where we're all showing the same thing, right? So I don't want to hear any rubbish in the comments about copying. And I know, I know most of my viewers aren't like that anyways. Um, I was going to actually do a custom Terra Scorcher with this chassis, but now I've learned that Glenn's doing a, he's putting his on his Terra Scorcher. So I may still go down that route because I was planning on blinging the hell out of it with blue alloy. And I know Glenn's got all the gold hop ups. Uh, and I go on his and you'll see that video on his channel uh, soon enough. Um, so I may still go down that route, but um, it'll be completely different than Glenn's because I want mine to be carbon and blue and his is then going to end up being carbon blue and, go and gold because the, the, the gentleman that made this chassis um, did all of his carbon in, uh, in gold. So 
it's going to look epic though with those gold wheels. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this. This is the pro version, just like Glenn's and just like uh, Gavin. So it's going to take the shorty lipo pack. Um, goes together with some servo mounts, three sets of servo mounts. But yeah, I'll, let me bring the camera over and I'll show it to you real quick. And uh, we'll move on to looking at these cars. All right, so now that I have you in position, so this is the carbon. He does a nice job. So I'm not sure if it goes this way or the other way, but essentially this goes together. Uh, like this. To make up your chassis. And then you use a bunch of servo mounts to hold it all together. Um, and then there's little chims and doodads that go along with it to make it up so like i said this is the pro edition gavin got the pro edition glenn got the pro edition everyone got the pro edition um which is fine but you're going to end up seeing this chassis three times from what i understand when glenn originally talked to me about it the guy was doing a hundred limited run of a hundred so i don't know if they're going to be available or not um permanently or if it's going to be a one run deal i think it probably is going to depend on sales um, if the guy ends up selling them, selling them out, which he probably will, um, he'll probably make more, you know? So if I have to, if I remember right, it was a hundred, maybe a hundred, I can't remember if it's a hundred USD or a hundred pound, um, for the kit. Uh, is that expensive? Uh, I think relatively speaking, like I think for a one-off, Probably not. Like Nick Walker Carbon is about the same price for like a Top Force. I think you get a little bit more from Nick than you do with that. But it's all relative to what it takes to make it. You know what I mean? So um, not not the end of the world to spend 100 on a Carbon, you know, a custom Carbon chassis like that. I know to get one for like a DFO3 is more than that. So um, which I'm actually ordering one. I'm going to build a DFO3 that's got a custom carbon chassis. So that's that's a build that will come up in the future. So my runner, Dyna Blaster. Uh, excited to have this one. And you definitely will see this one in a running video. I'm going to get it running this fall. And uh, I'm probably going to take it to my local track and run it. So the body's a little bit beat. It does. It's hand-painted. It was not painted in the metallic red um, like mine was. It doesn't have the silver bars. So I'm fine with it. It's just a runner body. Um, it fits the bill perfect. So when we look at the chassis, you can see the aluminum shocks, oil-filled shocks. They feel great. I don't know who makes them. I don't know what they are. Um... Everything else looks to be original. So the bell crank. I don't know if those are aluminum. No, they're, they're 3D printed. The bell crank is 3D printed. And so are the C-hubs. I don't know if you can see it. But it's like a gray color, not black. Uh, it's got a bumper on the front. Which the Dyna Blaster, the regular truck, does not have. And then uh, the rear hubs. You can see are like a gray color they're not the black ones um, but other than that everything else on the car is on the truck is fine love that mdc traction uh slipper clutch so yeah this is awesome it feels great um shocks feel great so yeah this is gonna fit the bill perfect for my dyna blaster runner uh, I appreciate everybody that after I did that video, I, there was a Dyna, it's actually still on eBay right now. There was a kit, a new unbox kit that had come up and everybody was sending me links to, it was funny. But I think people missed this, missed, missed the, uh, missed the fact that I said I wanted a runner. <laughs> Um, I didn't need a new inbox kit. I appreciate them sending me the link. It's since gone from a thousand down to eight fifty, and it's been sitting like that for a while. And in all honesty, that's that's not a bad price. I mean, it's a little bit high. I think one of my kits I got for like 
and I don't usually talk price, but it was like 600 I think you would be getting a deal if you found a Dynablaster new unbox kit now for $600. Um, they're, just, they're just an awesome truck. So, so yeah, I'm excited to have this one as my runner. And like I said, we're going to take the pink Acto tune that stole in my Shelf Queen. So we're going to take that one out of that and we're going to put it in here. And it's going to stay in here. Um, and that's going to be my runner. The Ultima 2. I'll show you how dirty it is. Look at the tires. It's like, it was like a red clay that the guy was running it on, or the track had like that reddish style dirt. Um, you can see the chassis is totally spanked, scratches all over it. Um, the arms don't look terrible. They don't have a ton of scratches. They're just dirty. So this car is definitely going to be uh, a mission for my ultrasonic cleaner. Um, I'm excited to see what what that cleaner is going to do to uh, clean up these parts. So, like I said, I've got I've got a brand new chassis um, that I was able to get from the same seller. Not a mark on it. So we may do a running video. This came with a battery in it. Still hooked up the whole nine yards. Um, we may run it like this and then restore it. Because I don't really want to restore it. And then... And then take it out for a run. I'd rather run it now. Oh, it doesn't it doesn't have a battery. It just had a patch cable. It's nice to have a new patch cable. It's got a couple patch cables. Look at this. <laughs> patch cable to a patch cable. That's funny. So, what's it got? Uh... I can't even read the name of that servo. Doesn't matter. It's got two servos in it. It's, what does it got for a... Oh, it's all Traxxas gear. So it's got old school Traxxas servos in it. And it's got an old school um, red crystal Traxxas receiver in it still has a mechanical speed control in it um so yeah the car's just it's just an, a survivor a vintage survivor the top radio plate doesn't look to be too too bad um so yeah this thing's gonna uh maybe we'll run it with that mechanical speed controller see if it works so yeah you'll see this one again for sure um i've always liked the look of the yellow and blue and I've looked at a few Ultima 2s and just never pulled the trigger. In fact, when I first started collecting, I almost bought an Ultima 2 by accident, accident thinking it was a, an Optima Mid. A tur uh, uh, Optima Mid Turbo or whatever it is. The yellow and blue one. Turbo Optima Mid. That would have been funny. <laughs> thinking you're getting a four-wheel drive mid and a, and a two-wheel drive Altima shows up instead so yeah I almost bought one by accident but now I'm glad to have it um, it'll be a lot of work but it's going to look great when it's done the next one so I actually just sent Glenn another 201 uh, and it's got the Exotech 8mm chassis extension on it He's going to do a 201 project. You're going to see his videos come up soon on the 201. Um, but yeah, I didn't really have any intentions of buying anything other than the 201. I've got a Mint 201 that was built, never run, in the cabinet. But I saw this and I just had to have it. So I'm, I'm real excited about it. I'm not, you know, the mid-motor configuration, 211XM. Diff feels absolutely stellar. All the blue. It's got the big bore aeration shocks on it. And then Martin did it with this white with the with the blue and chrome decals. Love it. And then uh, he's actually sending me right now a new chassis for it. So he was able to find one in Switzerland for me because this one's a little bit beat, which is fine. Uh, again, I'm probably going to run this. And I'm probably going to run it soon so that we can see that running footage over the winter. And then we're going to do a video where we put the new chassis on it. And then that's going to be the end of this car. It's going to get retired. But 
you know what's crazy on these cars? Look at this. Ready? Ready? Look at the turning angle on that thing. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> that blows my mind. <laughs> That's crazy. The lock to lock on that car is insane. But the rest of it, I mean, the motor plate, everything is like brand new. So once that new chassis goes on, this is going to be a mint car. So yeah, I'm glad I was able to uh, to get it from Martin. Thank you, Martin, if you're watching. I'm not sure if you watch my stuff or not. I know you know I have a YouTube channel, but I'm not sure that if you watch it or not. But if you are watching it, thank you. And then Martin sent me... I have a bunch of these pink wheels. It's funny because these ones, I don't know if that happens from the tire. Um, but it seems like they they start going dark around the outside edge and turn almost like a purplish. But I like the look of it. Um, I've got a bunch of the new pink wheels. So that's cool to have an extra set of wheels. And then he sent me the the wide rib tires or the, the two-wheel drive rib tires. Actually, these aren't even Tamiya. I know Tamiya makes a set like this. These are Groove. VTEC Groove front tires and then uh sent me a set of uh tamia buggy rear dish wheels it says hard but i don't know if they have hard and soft i didn't know they had hard and soft but those will always come in handy they're a little bit faded but we can always just spray them white and then last but not least lancia delta integral 16v so like i said you see this car in nitro all the time but i've never seen it in uh an electric this is the only one i've ever seen in electric so the box is in great shape it's actually a good size box too and then inside we we've got a futaba radio It's an attack two. We've got more radios than I know what to do with, but it's got the manual. The receivers in here. It's a small little thing. Eight double A's. Showing a black crystal in here. Uh, no, it's the same. It's a 58. They're both 58. Just says one's green, one's black. So we may have to try using this radio gear and see if it see if it works. This takes me back. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. I love vintage stuff. It's got your runaway Beck system. Still has all the servo, the servo bags with all the servo arms in it. There's your receiver. <laughs> so cool. It's like this thing just came out of a time machine. So that's the radio. And my first radio was an Attack R that I had with my Blackfoot. And I've got a couple of them um, since I started collecting that just came in with random cars. Never run an Attack 2 before. It's a little bit smaller of a unit. But it might be cool to try to fire this up with the old school radio gear. So we've got that. And then we've got this. Got this so we've got all the body parts are in the bag here the grill the lights um, everything we need to finish this body is in here along with extra parts trees and stuff so that's cool and then let's see if I can get this out of the way we've got the original manual and the original decal sheets Right, so it's cool that we're gonna have 
a Lancia Delta, a Tamiya Lancia Delta. And now this body shell is way bigger than the uh, Tamiya one. These scale car series cars are huge. Um, but now we get to have the, uh, the Kyosho version. I don't know why I think the I always think the Raiders four wheel drive. It's not. It's two wheel drive, uh, which is fine. Diff feels great. Look at that thing. <laughs> right? There's like not a mark on it. The bumper has a couple of scuffs on it. It may have been run like three or four times, but not much. I mean, look at the tires. They don't even have dirt on them. Kind of a cool looking Kyosho tire. Rally, rally special. Kyosho rally special. And then this has the scale car series body mounts, just like the Testarossa does, where they just kind of flip up. They're they're actually a pretty cool body mount. Um, I love the way that they did this. So there's your body. No protective film. I don't think. Maybe it does have protect it does have protective film. Awesome. It's got protective film on it. So that means any of these scratches that are on this are coming right out. That's awesome. This car is gonna look brand new once it's done. That body is huge. Um, at some point I'm gonna have to break out the Tamiya body just so that you can see the difference. So mechanical speed controls in there, both servos are in there. And it's the Futaba servos that are in there. So this thing's set up and ready to go. Um, friction shocks. Yeah, oh yeah, friction shocks for sure. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Um, yeah, yeah, so that thing's going to be cool. Um, I can see us having some fun with that thing. Little two-wheel drive ripper. Sweet. So yeah, I'm glad I uh, I'm glad I pulled the trigger on it. To be completely honest, this thing's in great shape, and I, I don't. You guys will have to tell me in the comments if you've ever seen this thing before from Kyosho. Do you remember it coming out? Did you, did, did did you have one? I mean, I don't know. Um, I never knew it existed. Like I said, I knew it existed to a certain degree, um, but I I always saw the the nitro version of it. I never saw the gas powered version of it so but their scale car series cars are absolutely epic um i think that's right that goes the other way so i know that once this thing is done it's gonna look sweet um so yeah that's it i mean look at the size of that thing huge the only problem with them is you can't get them in the cabinet <laughs> It's literally the size, I mean, I don't know. When you look at it compared to some of the other cars, the body is just enormous. So, yeah, that's gonna. That's it for now. Let me uh, move the camera back over for a closing, and uh, we'll wrap this video up. So that's going to do it for this um, video. Um, just a couple of cool cars. What can I say? Um, at least it wasn't six of them, like usual. <laughs> trying to dial it back a little bit i'm running out of space <laughs> but then i see stuff like this come up and i just can't resist um can't wait to do this one i i say it every video i'm like oh you, it won't be long till you see this one and it's just so many to do um it's not overwhelming but you know i can't do them all at once so it's you know i don't know when you'll see it again but you definitely see it again make sure you uh subscribe and turn your notifications on hit the all button on the bell so that you don't miss uh, any of the videos when we start working on these. And uh, definitely looking forward to running that Dyna Blaster again. Um, that's going to fill a niche. I think we're actually going to run all of them. Um, I'm going to try to get radio gear in all of them here in the next uh, two, three weeks. So that I can get some running footage. I really want to get a pile of running footage together. So that this winter on Wednesdays I can just be firing off running videos. Um, along with whatever else comes in. Uh, I don't plan on buying a lot more over the winter, but I still have, I don't know, 10 or 12 kits coming in from Taiwan Kenny. And a couple earmarked with uh, Jason at True Vintage. Um, but 
those won't be in for a while. So yeah, turn on your notifications, subscribe, give me a like click. Um, let me know in the comments what you think of the new the new cars. Uh, in particular, this one. Uh, absolutely killer. I can't wait to have both of them done side by side. A, just to see the difference in the size of the bodies. Because the Scale Car Series, I say it every time I look at one, the bodies are huge. They're literally like the uh, Mercedes-Benz C11 or the Group C car bodies. Those are enormous from, T from Tamiya. But the Kyosho Scale Car Series cars are exactly the same. They're huge. Like the Lamborghini Diablo, when we build that one, where do you see how big that body is? It's it's enormous. So, yeah, I hope you guys like the video. And, uh, and that's it. Um, we'll see you soon with the next one. Later.